Abdi, this essentially marks the first set of earnings, not just for you, but for the new strategic outlook the business is taking. And maybe let's just start from that point. Um, how do you feel the six months in review have been? Julian, uh, we've just announced a very strong set of results for the first half of the year 2023. As you say, this is quite significant for us because the bank has just started, you know, having closed a five-year strategic journey, has just started a new horizon of five years. And this is effectively the first set of results that we've announced under that new strategy and also under my tenure as MD. We're very pleased with what we have put in front of the market. Strong growth in balance sheet, uh, strong revenue growth, a very well managed picture on the cost side and therefore significant growth on profitability. Um, it's early days but it clearly shows that the strategy that we've put in place and our executional approach is working and is delivering results. So this is something that we are really, really pleased about. Looks like a compelling takeoff, but uh, Abdi, if I look at the numbers and I strip um, the half-year earnings between Q1 and Q2, it really looks to me like there was a bit of tapering off of momentum in Q2. Um, Q1, your net earnings were up 52%. Aggregate H1 is looking at about 32%. It looks like um, there was deceleration in Q2. Maybe just give us some context around the operating environment. When you look, uh, Julian, at the, you know, quarter on quarter, um, you're right. But this is a comparison to prior year. And therefore, what you will see is that uh, in the quarter one of 2022, the numbers were fairly depressed. And uh, Q1 this year compared to 2022 was an aggressive percentage. However, last year had that hockey stick effect and therefore we had better performances as the year progressed. So it's a relative deceleration, but when you look at the absolute numbers and you know the, the, the numbers we're putting on the balance sheet in retail, in corporate, in business banking, there is absolutely no deceleration. There is very good momentum in the numbers. It's the comparison with prior year that presents you know, some of these numbers. Of course, on the uh, cost side, good improvement. On the impairment side, we took a few forward-looking uh, kind of numbers into, into the, into the P&L to be on the conservative side and ensure that our coverage ratio remains good. But overall, uh, the momentum is good, the performance is strong, and we are seeing uh, significant growth on the, on the P&L. Okay. And uh, looking at the um, quality of the loan book, I've seen you have ramped up con uh, provisions quite a bit. Not anything unusual. The industry, I think, is taking a very cautious stance going forward. And uh, just curious as to your view on the credit risk in this market, at least in the period closing in 2023. Um, ultimately, what you want to do, a very big chunk of our work as a banking sector is to ensure that the credit we put out into the market is good quality credit. So there is a responsibility on our part to ensure that we have the right policies, uh, that as we support these various sectors, we are providing solutions that work for that customer base. And that's a big responsibility. And you will see that in ABSA, we take that responsibility very seriously. Uh, we ensure as much as possible at the end of the day, there is always an element of risk. But as much as possible, we are supporting customers, we are advising correctly, and we are providing solutions that work. So up until this moment, we've been in single digit in terms of the NPL ratio. We are still uh, 400 or so basis points below the industry average. We still want to drive it down. We still want to work on the quality of the book. But, you know, as you say, wherever there is strain and this changes quarter on quarter, we then take a very conservative view. We take a forward-looking view and to ensure that we have the right coverage ratios, sometimes we take a conservative decision. 
and that's what we did in quarter one of this year. But you will see as the year evens out, uh, already in the H1 number that continues to improve, especially as we upscale and grow the asset book in its, in its totality. So it's an area of challenge, but we are working very hard to ensure that we are supporting customers through this period and that wherever we need to take a conservative approach, we take it so that we are reflecting the correct NPL uh, position. Okay, and still on the quality of the loan book, uh, where is, um, in the period of that review, where did, um, would you say the hits came largely from FCY or the shilling side? It's, it's again a combination. It's a combination um, both on the FCY side as well as the, the local currency side. And remember, these are mostly general provisions that are taken um, you know, with a forward-looking macroeconomic uh, picture, and some of them are not specific. They are not name-specific, and there are a few name-specific ones as well. And we believe that the position we've taken is more on the conservative side in terms of recognition. And this is something we pride ourselves on. We want to make sure that if there is a 50-50 call, we take the more conservative approach so that we are reflecting the, the NPL position more, more correctly. And um, speaking about the growth of the business, just looking at your loan book, um, up by a significant margin, and I've always had this conversation with ABS executives, when you look at your loan to deposit quite high by industry standards, and I'm curious at this particular point, when you look at it from a currency denomination standpoint, where is the throughput coming through significantly? Is it local currency? Is it USD? Um, you will see it's almost a 50-50. A it's a mixed picture. Um, the asset growth uh, is driven by some of the key sectors of the economy that have grown. And, you know, uh, if you look at the Kenyan macroeconomy, um, for example, tourism is experiencing a very good recovery we are seeing very good recovery in uh, agric production, which has actually helped the country's inflation number as well. We are seeing uh, diaspora remittances and payments going up. And those sectors drive some of the asset growth that you are seeing. We've also put uh, significant debt into the SME business, and we're helping small and medium enterprises in their growth journey. Uh, Currency-wise, it's both dollar as well as uh, local currency. The loan-to-deposit ratio is one that is trending downwards. If you compare last year's numbers to where we are now, both in local currency as well as the, you know, the overall picture, that number is coming down. We do sometimes take a call when it comes to funding, especially taking into account the cost of funding. We do take a call sometimes on whether to fund from our group or elsewhere, or whether to fund through local deposits. But that's normally um, you know, a, a one-off decision. Typically, what we want to do is grow local deposits, and you would have seen in the numbers a very strong growth in the, in the, in the deposits on the balance sheet. OK. I sat down. Um a year ago speaking about ABSA earnings and one of the issues which I raised was um, at the time the industry by and large was really riding the tide of uh, foreign exchange trading income and my question was what happens when this tide recedes and if you look at the numbers you just put out um, clearly last year you were 50 plus year on year up currently in the 20s do you feel this tide is receding the market is normalizing I think ultimately, Julian, what you want to do as a bank is to ensure that you have a balanced portfolio and you have a balanced revenue uh, picture overall. And this is something that we've worked very hard on in APSA to ensure that we are not reliant on any specific stream uh, in a concentrated kind of uh, uh, manner. And when you look at uh, the numbers that we've just shared, it's really right across the business. Retail banking growing double digit, business banking growing double digit, corporate and investment banking growing double digit. Um, 
the FX piece is, is part of that. We continue to work with uh, not just ourselves, but industry partners, uh, Kenya bankers and others to ensure that first and foremost, we are supporting uh, financial stability in the markets. Um, and I must mention that in the last uh, you know, few months, uh, the new leadership in the central bank, the new governor, the deputy governor, have been working very closely with all of us in the industry to ensure that there is stability, to ensure that there is order. Uh, the new code of conduct has been issued. And we see a lot of positive developments in, in, in that space. So yes, uh, it's a revenue area, but it's by no means today our biggest area of revenue. We've balanced the portfolio and will continue to balance so that you de-risk and we are not concentrated in any one area, you know, as a bank. Okay. The new strategies is heavily anchored on diversification, really just speaking to what you've just touched on. And I'd like an update in terms of, uh, and it could be early days, but um, the custody business, asset management, bank insurance, yeah. how are they panning out? So if you look at the, the numbers we've shared, um, the, the, as you say, it's still early days. And therefore, in terms of contribution to the, to the total revenue, um, it's still somewhere below 10%. But in terms of year-on-year -year growth, those areas, those new business streams, the bank assurance, the asset business, are showing 100%, 70% type of revenue growth. So it's an early indication, but it clearly shows those income streams are areas that we should be focusing on, that we should be driving as we diversify the bank. At the end of the day, the picture or the vision that we have for the bank is to be a financial services provider that covers not just banking but across the financial services sector through either through partnerships or through direct uh, provision of the service by ourselves so that's the vision and we are building and the early indications on these new income streams are quite quite positive